So, you know that how to calculate the interaction coefficient. I will give you one also example or some specimen calculation for the determination of the interaction coefficient. Before that, I am just showing very simple way that how you can derive the equation. So, for example, that if this is the this is the pull out uh, pull out scene and this is the geogrid material and you are pulling this geogrid material and this is the soil sand let us say top and the bottom and you are pulling pull this. So, what will happen when you will put and then you are applying some air bag is there air bag and then you put some load on the sphere. So, there will be a development of the friction between the soil and this let us say this is geogrid material there will be development of friction between soil and the geogrid material. So, if this is the tau and this let is the tau. So, this pull, pull out let us say this pull out is equal to p. So, p will be equal to 2 into tau top and bottom 2 into tau and then this is the normal load 2 tau into sigma of n. So, 2 tau into what is the bond length? Suppose this bond length is this, that is what you call L of E. So, this sample may fill like this. So, this is the bond length which is important to us. So, we can we can rewrite like this that P is equal to 2 into tau into L of L of E. So, this L of E is the embedded 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 length embedded length. So, again this tau is equal to 2 into this is C of A you know tau is equal to C A strength of the soil C plus sigma n into tan pi. So, C plus sigma n into tan of either internal friction between the soil and geosynthetic is delta. So, this p will be a metal length. So, p will be equal to this. So, if there is no addition, so C a will be the 0. So, this part will be the 0. So, you can write 2 into sigma n into tan of delta or you can write sigma n is equal to gamma into h at any depth h and if gamma is the unit weight of the soil. So, 2 into sigma into gamma into h into tan of delta. Now, if you can express this tan delta in terms of the pi. So, you can write 2 into gamma of h into that is C of i into tan of pi. This pi is your friction angle of the soil to soil and this tan delta is equal to friction angle between the soil and the geogrid material. So, this is almost two third times of the tan phi will give you the value of tan delta. That means, C i you can consider almost two third. This approximate value of structure, but this interaction coefficient C i is very important and that we have determined that how to calculate the C i value. So, I will give you one of the I will give you one of the example for uh, this um, to determine the um, interaction coefficient value. So, let us say that it is the pull out box. And there should be some surcharge. And this surcharge is equal to Q, this is in Q. 
kilopascal. Now, this is the geogrid material. Let us say this is geogrid material. And this distance, embedded length distance, let us say this distance is equal to L of E. Okay? So, there is a development or mobilization of the friction between the soil and the geogrid material. And it is located at a distance of h, h is equal to let us say 0.3 meter and this soil has a gamma is equal to 20 kilo Newton per meter cube and pi value is equal to 30 degree. So, you have to determine that what will be the interaction coefficient, interaction coefficient that is C of i. So, here, here it is pulling. So, this is pull out force. So, this is P. So, this let us say from this test you determine that P value is equal to 65 kilo Newton per meter and embedded length that is L of E is equal to 1 meter and pi is given is equal to 30 degree and there is a surcharge that is Q, Q is equal to 60 kilo Pascal. So, you have to solve this problem. So, for solution you know sigma of n will be this is gamma into height into plus surcharge load. So, this sigma n will be the gamma into h plus the surcharge load is equal to q. So, what is gamma? Gamma is 20. So, this is 20 into what is h? h is 0.3. So, this is 0.3 plus q, q is the surcharge load that is q and that q value is given here 60. So, this will be equal to 60. So, if you can calculate, so then you can calculate the sigma of n value. So, this sigma n value will be 66 kilo Pascal. Now, you know the equation that is P is equal to 2 into C i into L e into sigma of n into tan of tan of pi. So, you know what is p value? p value already I have mentioned here that 65. So, you can write uh, five value. So, p is equal to the uh, total load, yes, that is will be equal to the 65 is equal to 2. You have to determine C of pi. So, this is C i and L e is given, this L e embedment length is 1 meter. So, you can write L e is equal to 1 meter into that is sigma n 
you have to determine sigma n. Sigma n is equal to the you know gamma into h okay, plus q. So, here sigma n is equal to gamma h plus q. So, this will be the 66. So, this will be equal to the 66 this into tan pi. So, pi value is also given here is 30 degree. So, this will be tan of tan of 30 degree. So, from this you have to calculate that what is C i. So, then C i will be equal to uh, that is 60 of pi this divided by 2 into 66 into 0 0.587 tan 30 degree. So, this will be equal to 0.849. So, you can say that interaction coefficient, interaction coefficient that is C of i will be equal to 0.849. So, this is very important and now you know how to calculate the interaction coefficient of the geogrid material or any geocentric material. Now, I will give you another um, example for the pull out test for the geogrid material. So, for example, this is I am showing you some schematic view of the geogrid material. and you are pulling this. This is schematic view of pull out test. Of pull out test that is side view. And here is the geogrid material. This is the geogrid material. So, there will be development of friction mobilization between soil and geogrid material. And this let us say is located at a depth of z. And let us say this is 1 meter and this also let us say this is 1 meter and there is a surcharge load. And that surcharge load is equal to 15 kilo Pascal. And this is tau and this is normal this is sigma n is acting. I will now show you one example for the pull out strength of the geogrid material. Now, you know that geogrid material has a longitudinal. So, let us say this is the geogrid sample these are all geogrid in the it's called longitudinal rip and And these are the tanverse rib. So, this is longitudinal rib, and this is longitudinal rib, this is tanverse rib. And this is tanverse rib, tanverse rib, tanverse rib. That means three longitudinal rib and three tanverse ribs. Its length, let us say it is 900 millimeter, and this tight width is equal to 300 millimeter. Now, here how then this geogrid material what you are doing you are pulling 
that means total anchorage or you can say it is pull out. So, you have to determine P is equal to pull out strength, pull out strength. So, in this longitudinal rib, there is a shear strength. So, this is longitudinal rib shear strength. So, you can so like this, this is longitudinal rib shear strength. So, this is let me give this is longitudinal rib shear strength. This is longitudinal rib shear strength. This is longitudinal rib shear strength. If the longitudinal rib shear strength is expressed as L R S, that means this is longi longitudinal rib shear strength. Okay, this is longitudinal rib shear strength. And here also, <coughs> these are the canvas, canvas rib. So this canvas rib shear strength is also acting when you are pulling. So when you are pulling, there is a canvas rib. So canvas rib is this one this one, this one, and this one, this one, and this one. It is the tenverse rib. Okay? This is tenverse rib, this is tenverse rib, this is tenverse rib, this is tenverse rib. Because when you are pulling the geogit material, that means longitudinal rib see a strength in this direction. But tenverse rib shear strength is this direction. So, if I designated at T of R s, that means tenverse tenverse rib shear strength. This is tenverse rib shear strength. Okay? Now, apart from the longitudinal rib shear strength and the tenvers rib shear strength, there is a tenvers rib bearing strength. Tenvers rib bearing strength. This part, this part, and they are showing my rate. This part. This is tenvers ring bearing. This is tenvers ring bearing. Okay, this is tenvers ring bearing. 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 That means these are T R B is tens bars rib bearing strength. Bearing so, we wanted to see that when this geogate material is pulling, so there is a development of shear strain along the longitudinal rib as well as the tenverse rib here. And apart from longitudinal and the tenverse rib, there is a tenverse rib bearing strain. And we wanted to see that what part of 
the geogrid material bear the maximum strength, whether the longitudinal rip, whether the transverse rip, or whether the bearing, transverse ring bearing capacity. So, for the pull out strength or anchorage pull out strength, so we can write that P, P is equal to 2 of summation of L R S, longitudinal drift shear strain, to bottom and up 2, so 2 of summation of L R S plus summation of T of R S, that means D to transverse rib, top and bottom, T of R S, this into tau. Okay? So, this is for the longitudinal and the transverse rib. And for this transverse rib, that is for the bearing strength. So, you can write this is summation of T R B, this is T R B here into Q of 0. That means this value also will be the given, what will be the bearing capacity. So, then you can determine what should be the pull out strength or what should be the total anchorage strength or the pull out strength. I will give you one of the example and to show that which part it take the maximum pull out strength, whether it is a longitudinal, whether it is a transverse or whether it is a bearing. So, for an example, For an example, that when the anchorage capacity of here, anchorage capacity of each of the that three strain component and percentage contribution due to the bearing capacity, and as I said, let us say that arbitrary dimension this length is about 900 millimeter and this length is about or with about uh, let us say with about 300 millimeter and the longitudinal rib are 50 millimeter spacing. So, this longitudinal rib are 50 millimeter spacing. So, this longitudinal rib spacing is 50 millimeter. So, this is 50 millimeter. Okay, longitudinal rib, this spacing, one to one spacing is 50 millimeter. And the transverse rib, this to this spacing is 100 millimeter. So, this is 100 millimeter. So, this spacing is 50 millimeter and this spacing is 100 millimeter. Okay? And all the ribs, all the ribs, all ribs, are 15 millimeter wide by 3.5 millimeter thickness. Okay? So, rib wide, you can say that rib wide is about 15 millimeter and the thick of the rib is about 3.5 millimeter. And uh, in the analysis, you find the shear strength 
is about 14.4 kilopascal. So, shear strength also given, shear strength. is 14.4 kilopascal. Then this is about 25 into 10 of 30 degree. And the bearing capacity, bearing capacity is 8800 kilopascal, 800 kilopascal. That is based on the soil friction angle is based on the soil friction angle is 35 degree. So, this is the problem given and you have to find out what should be the total anchorage or pull out strength. So, now this P is equal to 2 into L summation of LRS. So, what is LRS? Longitudinal rib shear strength. So, here this rib wide about 15 millimeter. So, we can write here. So, this will be equal to 2 into 0 0.015 into this is 0 0.900 because this length is 900 millimeter 0 0.900 into this width of this is 300 millimeter and the spacing is 50 millimeter that means 300 by 50. So, 300 by 50 this is 300 by spacing is 50, 300 by 50 will be equal to 6. So, this into 6 plus this is for longitudinal rib shear strength. Now, next for tau TRS that means transverse rib shear strength. For the transverse rib shear strength that means this. So, here again that why this 0 0.015, so 0 0.015 this into and again this is 0 0.300, 0, 0 0.300 into this is 900, this is 900 and this spacing is about 100. So, this 900 by 100 that means it should be 9. Okay. So, these are the data due to the longitudinal rib shear strength and transverse rib shear strength this into uh, you can say this is the uh, uh, this into tau. So, tau value is given that means shear strength value is 14.4. So, this into 14.4 okay. plus plus due to the bearing that means TRB, TRB is this one, TRB that means transverse rib or the bearing strength. So, transverse ring bearing strength will be because the thick rib of the thick is 3.5 millimeter. So, you can write this will be equal to 0 0.0035 this is the thickness into this is 300 
millimeter. So, 0 0.300. This into and this length is about you can see the 9, it will be the 9. That means 900 by 100, that means this is will be equal to 9. This total into that what will be the <coughs> bearing capacity that is Q0. So, this is Q0 bearing capacity that is 800 kilopascal. So, this will give the 800 kilopascal. So, this part for the longitudinal reef sea strain, this part for the transverse reef sea strain and this part is the transverse reef bearing strength. Okay? So, now if you calculate the first part and the second part and the third part. So, you can obtain P that means total anchorage or pull out strength will be equal to first part is 2.33, second this is for the transverse strip and second is for uh, sorry longitudinal rib and second is for the transverse rib. Transverse rib is 1.17 plus for the transverse rib bearing strength and that is 7.56. So, this part is the longitudinal rib and this part is the transverse rib shear strength and this part is the transverse ring bearing strength. So, total P will be equal to 11.06 kilo Newton. Now, we want to see the percentage contribution of the bearing capacity. So, bearing capacity that is B of C will be equal to 7.56 this divided by 11.06 this into 100. So, this bearing capacity will be about 68 percentage of the total total anchorage force. So, note that degree of mobilization of these three component of the anchorage resistance during the pull out are the function of load extension properties of the longitudinal rib. and the flexibility and load extension property of the transverse rib. So, here you find that bearing capacity is giving more 68 percent of the total anchorage force with respect to the either the longitudinal rib shear strain or the transverse rib shear strain. So, bearing capacity is giving always on the hard value. Thank you.